Hey, this is Risk of Rain. Uh, I also had recorded some of this earlier, but I was having problems because YouTube says, "Hey, you wanna you wanna enlarge your video? Why don't you give this to your phone number?" And I'm like, "I said like no, I don't want to. I can still make videos under 15 minutes and still put out shit." To prove that I'm not a robot, I'm gonna play the robot also in this game. <laughs> so, this is a game where you jump and you shoot sometimes. So it perfectly falls into my jump and shoot uh, choice of genre for playing games. Uh, I'm not good as everyone, so I'm not going to probably play everyone unless it's super important. Or it's unless it's requested. I don't know. It depends. I only am probably gonna play Handy and Bandit. Excuse me. Sorry. Uh, those are the only two people I can play. So let's click play. I am playing this game with the controller. It feels right when I play a controller. So, I don't know how this is gonna turn out, but right now everything is super tiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna grab a dang thing with this guy. Except for that sometimes. No, you don't have to worry about dang thing, a damn thing. Piggy bank, I don't want this. Give it back. I don't put it back. I don't want I don't want this stupid crap. This is a game where you are part of a team of survivors and you have to find your way to the teleporter in each area. And after you do that, you have to confront this magical guy named Specially Man. What is this? Oh, I need this. And there's a lot more other survivors on the character list, character select screen. They all do different stuff. It's pretty cool. This game is pretty cool. Also, it's a uh, RNG dungeon crawler. Everything is different every time you play it. So. That adds a lot to the replayability. I saw the teleporter up there. So that's what I'm going to go do. Once you activate it, you have 90 seconds to defend yourself until it's ready for you to go. Usually a boss spawns, or a boss always spawns. I forgot my abilities. Bam! Okay. But once you do that, Enemies are start going to spawn like crazy. The only bad thing about this guy early on is that he doesn't jump very high. That's in this chest. Get this first. Oh, thank you. I need that. So his standard attack is a punch that's very slow but very powerful. It stuns people or pushes people back a little bit. Second ability is every time he kills an enemy, he summons a drone. And you can press that button to send your drones to attack, and when they come back to you, they give you the health. Or they give you health. And then third ability is he gets attack increased speed and damage for a few seconds, and as long as you're attacking enemies, he he keeps that that stance, I guess that's what it's called. What's good about the sentries is that you can kill this enemies from a distance like that that you normally can't get to. So, about the nature of my channel, uh, I can't do Bomberman Hero, as I try to explain. Uh, thing is, it's... Yeah, I was playing on an emulator. What are you, what are you gonna do about it? Wanna fight about it? Anyway, uh, yeah, I was playing it on an emulator on my old laptop. And it holds the save data. Why? Because if I try playing it on this new laptop, which is much faster with 6 RAM, as opposed to that laptop, which had 2 RAM, uh, 
I'd have to start all over, and I don't really want to do that because I don't care about. I liked the game when I was little. I don't. I'm starting to see how ridiculous it was. It is now, or when I was playing it. Um, stupid gold gun. It's not very helpful early on. Um, but yeah, uh, that computer is really slow, and it takes like half an hour to boot everything up, and I don't want to deal with that. Also, it's been telling me to replace the battery for two years now, and this time I think it's serious. The message said, hey fuckface, you better replace the battery or else I'm going to explode on your ass. And I was like, whoa, chill out, old laptop, you don't have to be so direct. And yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to deal with that. So I'm just going to keep playing these jump and shoot games. Uh, speaking of recording things, uh, well, and Camta like I said, Camtasia, I didn't say that, <laughs> whatever. Um, Camtasia wouldn't load also on the old computer if I decided to just start recording on that. It just wouldn't load, I double clicked it like 10 times, the little splash logo came up for Camtasia. But it would never load the actual recorder, and I was just getting frustrated, and I, I didn't want to deal with it. So, yes. So, I need to stop saying so, because it's so annoying when someone says so, so many times that you so don't want to hear it anymore. Yeah, I think I've gotten all the so's out. Okay. Now that I've defeated the boss... I wasn't even really paying attention. I can leave this area. Yeah, the robot. The robot is freaking cool. Cause I I like being able to just rush in enemy swarms and do stuff. Even though I'm getting hit a lot, but you're doing more than what you take in, and that's pretty cool. I'm just gonna find the teleport. This is my least favorite area. Actually, yes, this is my least favorite area. Because it's a super huge jump in size, and I don't like the little. This, I'll point them out if they show up. But these specific enemies I really hate because they're surprisingly powerful, and I always underestimate them. And I end up dying usually. Uh, let's see here. Nope, don't have enough. Okay, I watched um, Doug Walker. He's the Soldier Critic guy. I watched him as Doug Walker as himself. In he just reviewed, uh, or he just talked about Unfriended. I. Excuse me. I here's my opinion of Befriended. It's a stupid premise. Um, a ghost appears, or the ghost of a dead girl appears on some people's Skype, and the entire movie is done in Skype. And oh, it's so clever and new, and whatever. Um, well, that's what Doug Walker liked about it. He liked that it was new, it tried something different, and uh, he. he he said that as a scary movie, he said it, the way it was done, was able to make, uh, these things, these things I fucking hate, cause they shoot, they can attack you pretty far, or at a distance, and where did these guys come from? Uh, anyway, uh, he said, yeah, he liked that it was new and it tried something different in the horror genre, and I I guess I just don't see it. It just looked stupid to me. It, it sounded like... This is based on... I guess I can't really talk about it because I haven't seen the movie, but this is based on my impression of it from the, uh, from the trailers and ads and stuff. It looks like a movie that I would hope is so bad that it's laughable and I would go see it to laugh at it, 
but I'm hearing it's not even laughably bad, laugh laughably bad, and that's the worst part, because that means I would have gone in there just not had a good time. It's like I'm here seeing the shitty movie I knew was going to be shitty, and. But uh, before that, I watched um, other people on Channel Awesome, Channel awesome. Uh, Brad Jones and his team reviewed it. Uh, they pretty much summed up what I thought about the movie before it came out, and it ended up being just what I thought it was, just a dumb like horror movie about like, Sky a ghost on Skype. They said that the Brad Jones's people said that uh, the people in it were just really unlikable, and I find out I find that pretty easy to believe. Also, uh, Brad Jones, not not Brad Jones, Doug Walker said he knew that too. He realized that right away that these are like generic douchey teenagers, but he said. He liked that they get their comeuppance in the end. They all get picked off by the ghosts or whatever that's haunting them. And he liked at the end or throughout the movie there's a whole message of like against cyberbullying. But I don't know if I buy into that because it's a it's a shitty premise, first of all. And I feel like they shoehorned in the whole cyberbullying moral, don't do it, and makes people feel bad or whatever. Don't be a troll, all that shit. They just made the shitty movie, and then and then said that. I don't really think that's how you make an impact like that. Because it's like if I made a movie about a horror movie about a Hummer and it's just a stupid movie about a Hummer that goes around killing people and then throughout the movie people are saying man Hummers are so bad at destroying the environment and us and and I say yeah that's that's what I wanted to get the message out of like I couldn't just you can't just say that at the end it's so stupid well, what are you gonna do? It appeals to teenagers, I guess, which I not am not anymore, so I guess that's why it doesn't really appeal to me. And also, Doug Walker <laughs> doesn't he didn't like Interstellar. I thought it was a great movie. He he said he didn't like two thirds of Interstellar, which really unfortunate I was surprised and and then he ends up liking unfriended so I don't even know what I don't even know what to say to that just how do you I don't know how I I thought I knew how he thought about movies but I guess his nostalgia critic thoughts and his uh, and his Doug Walker thoughts are different things uh, all I know is, I used to only disagree. I used to only disagree with him about Space Jam <laughs> and uh, what's that movie? Space Jam and Good Burger are the only movies I disagreed with him about. Those are pretty classic things to me. Not just because of the soldier actor, whatever. But I thought <laughs> Good Burger was genuinely funny. Is like dumb Nickelodeon humor goes, or as far as that goes, and it looks like I'm gonna have to pause the video here so I can be under the 15 minute mark. So I'll see everybody next time.